welcome back to the shop. So about maybe, I don't know, maybe a month or maybe more uh, so ago, I did a modification for the bandsaw that added a uh, hydraulic downfeed for it. Um, and it made it much more user friendly. And the basis for a lot of that was, uh, for most of that, was on this article here from Machinist uh, Workshop. And uh, the gentleman who wrote the article, uh, Richard Vandenberg, had actually contacted me via email and uh, was very happy with the amount of interest that the, the video had generated. And he liked a lot of the suggestions that you guys had made. So he asked me if we would just do a quick redo, uh, an update of it, adding in the suggestions that you guys um, suggested. So that's what we're going to do. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to add in a quarter turn ball valve in there so that we don't have to touch the needle valve to hold the saw in the vertical position. Uh, I'm also going to go in there and just reseat the, uh, the check ball uh, with, a, with a punch. And also I'm going to make a new handle uh, or a hand wheel out of disc um, for the, the, um, the needle valve. The one that's there is just like a, a T handle and it's not very sensitive. So I'm going to make a full disc, probably about the same, um, the same diameter just because I need to be able to get at the plug on the other side of that and anything bigger will kind of get in the way. Uh, so we're probably going to go about the same size as that bar but we're going to make it into a disc form and we'll probably put some uh, some marks on it so we can figure out how actually how far we're turning it. And I actually got a brand new one too because this one here was really sensitive. I want to see if a new one is the same and uh, see if maybe we can clean up the seat and get it to, to steal a little bit, a bit better and not be as, uh, as sensitive. So anyway, let's, uh, let's go to the saw and we'll show you, you know, what we have going on um, from the last build. We'll take it apart and add the new components and see uh, if we can improve usability. Okay, so here's the cylinder that some of you guys may remember me building there. And um, a lot of you guys had a lot of good suggestions on that video, so um, we're going to implement those, as I said before. So one of the problems is, uh, one of the great benefits of this cylinder here is that you can lock down the valve there, lift it up, it's going to get the pressure in there, and it'll, uh, it'll hold itself up. Okay, that's also one of the problems is you always have to shut this valve. You can't leave it adjusted for a, uh, a feed rate and uh, just um, lift it up and have it stay. So a lot of you guys said just put a quarter turn uh, ball valve on the outlet of this. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, also, the other thing is this handle is kind of touchy. Um, to make it go down, I got about a quarter turn before it starts to go down. And then after that, I maybe an eighth of a turn until it really starts to speed up. That's a little too fast. So we're going to take this apart and we're going to see how the seat on it looks. Um, I do have another one in case the seat on this is a little cruddy. Um, and we'll look at one right out of the package too. And we'll also um, add a nice round handle on this. And we'll see if we can rig up some numbers and things on it. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm going to pull this all apart. Also, some of you guys had said that uh, when you put the check ball in there, just give the check ball a tap and you'll seal it completely. So while I have it all apart, we're going to pop that check ball out and, um, for the bypass and we're just going to give her a tap with a uh, center punch to make a nice, stronger seat um, since we're going to have all this apart. So what I'm going to do right now is just take this pot off camera, take everything apart, drain all the oil out of it, and then we'll set up on the bench to uh, put in the little mods. And then we can set up on the the, um, the lathe to uh, make the handle. Okay, so we got this all pulled apart here. And uh, of course we made a mess, no matter how much we prepare for, uh, you know, how, try to minimize making a mess. Whenever you're working with fluids, you end up making a mess. So, cleaned it up. Um, I know some of you guys were worried about these O-rings not being able to handle the transmission fluid, um, but the O-rings I got said that it could handle transmission fluid, and as you see there, if the camera will focus, there is no degradation in any of these O-rings here at all, and they've been sitting there for a month and a half, two months or so. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to take out 
this check ball which is right in here and this is our passage for our um, return so we don't have to mess with the uh, the needle valve on to raise the saw and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna un undo that I'm gonna pull the the ball out I'm actually gonna go off camera and just put this into um, a, a vise just sit it on there and then um, I'm gonna tap the ball into its seat so that way it'll seal nice we got a pretty good seal without doing that just by tightening down the screw um, but we can get a better seal if we just tap that ball into place so I'm gonna go do that now and we'll come right back on okay so now we're gonna be focusing here on our needle valve and you know it just comes apart like this and here's the tapered seat and uh, when I took this apart some of this came out and those are actually brass chips and when I looked on this, um, there was a gouge in the seat. And this was really, really kind of temperamental uh, when I put it in. It was really um, sensitive. And uh, I didn't do anything to this valve when I put it in uh, at all. And um, let me get into this one, which is brand new, okay? And I open this up, and what it is is just these are made cheaply. Um, when they cross drilled this hole, there's no cleanup in there. You can see all those burrs in there. And I'll get closer shots of this. Uh, I'll see, play, see if I can play with the macro settings a little bit. So I'm going to use the new valve. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to clean out the seat and make, everything, make sure everything's all nice and smooth and make sure that um, this taper fits in there nice. Um, now, some people have suggested that, you know, for a finer fe feel on this, you can... Um, change the threading on it to a finer thread. Now we have um, 32 threads per inch on here right now and the only thing I have that is uh, finer than that would be for uh, an actual smaller diameter than what this is so we're just gonna deal with what we have here but we are gonna make another knob so we'll drive this pin out and we'll make a nice comfy knob and we'll see if we can put some numbers on there too and make it you know all spiffy. Um, so let me play with some macro settings on the camera and see if I can get you in really close to these valves and you can see what that seat looks like. Okay, so this is the one that was in there. Alright. There's the seat. I'm oh, sorry, there's the seat. It's that way. So you can see some ragged edges there. And this right here is that little groove in the seat I was talking about right there. Of the screw, you can see it camera doesn't pick it up as much but it's kind of deep now this is the brand new one right out of the package and you can see all the jaggies down the bottom there okay right right in there right where they broke through with that that hole there so we're gonna use this one but we're gonna you know get in there and deburr it all nice and uh Make that seat a lot better and a lot cleaner. Okay. Okay, so um, we got the needle valve back together again here. And I just drove the, uh, the handle out and it was just uh, in there with a, with, a, um, with a knurl, with a straight knurl to hold it on. So uh, I just drove that out. And obviously this is going to go into here again on the back side or wherever you particularly want it but mine's going in on the back side there now in line here we want to put a quarter turn ball valve of some sort now problem is you're not going to be able to at least for quarter inch you're not going to be able to go into Home Depot or Lowe's and get one uh, you can get one like this but it's going to be 3 8 so you would have to ad adapt that somehow but what I have here and I got this at work um, we use these all the time in refrigeration for uh, recovery units and things like that. And uh, this is just a quarter turn ball valve. It's quarter inch flare by quarter inch male flare by quarter inch female flare. And uh, the number on this is part number, since you guys always like part numbers. Uh, MBV 14 FM by made by NRP. Got that at United Refrigeration. Same thing with this. This is just a 90 that is um, eighth inch pipe by quarter inch flare. And it does have a Schrader pin in there that is removable. And um, part numbers on this here. 
is uh, 100-0031, made by IRP. So usually these are on like uh, semi-hermetic compresses, things like that. So we're just going to take that out. That 90 will screw into here. like so this valve now this little piece of uh, copper here is actually really important that's a gasket that goes in the female uh, flared side and uh, we'll obviously tighten this all up but that's gonna go somewhere in that general vicinity where the hell is that pointed that far up make things like they used to man I don't I don't know if you can you can tell let me see if they're all like that or if it's just that one no well, it looks like it's just that one yeah. yeah it's just this one yeah this one got made wrong this thread is off this thread is off at an angle so when, when you screw it in I don't know if you can you can see that. Look at look at how far look how far off that is. <laughs> uh, where are these made? PRC, People's Republic of. Uh, ready? Let's see if this one works. Why are these all so far off, man? Look at that. Look at how far off that is. What is up with that? Uh, man, it's not my threading that's off. It's definitely not my threading. It's either, is it this that's off? I think they're all like that. Okay, so annoyingly, I had to go to the hardware store and get another one because all three of these are not 90 degrees. Um, it would be fine for refrigeration and stuff for what I got to do at work. I mean, it ain't going to make that much of a difference, but for this, where I need it to line up, uh, it is going to make a difference. So what we need to do first is uh, get this guy right there. Put that, oop, that in there, and put the flare on. Now, flares don't need any kind of Teflon tape or any kind of goo. Let me get another adjustable. that obviously the lineup and if you feel like you can get another turn out of it 
Uh, you can go ahead and do that. I can get another turn. Should be able to get another turn out of that. A little bit more. That looks pretty good lined up. Get the good old Teflon. Now Teflon, even Teflon, you don't need a whole lot of it. A lot of people tend to overdo this stuff. Uh, one to two wraps around. Should be more than enough of what you need. Just be sure that the dangly end is with the direction of tightening so it doesn't unfurl itself as you tighten it in. And same deal with this. We're going to tighten it down. As well as we can here. And we'll, once we start to feel it tighten up, I don't think I'm gonna. You don't wanna try another turn on it? I could probably get another turn out of that. Yeah. And there we go. Alright, so that's in. You can see I'm 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 a little bit off. I want it like that so I can bend it back into place. What you want don't want to do is you don't want to tighten it down and then loosen it up again. Uh, better off leaving a little bit proud like this and then tighten them in uh, till they line up. I'm gonna do the same thing with the needle valve. Okay, so we got two different types of fittings here. We have a flared fitting and a compression fitting. The compression fitting takes a uh, compression nut, like this, the little ferrule inside, and as we tighten it down into this seat, it basically crimps onto the tubing like so. And they work great. The only issue is they don't like to be taken off and on a lot. A lot of times, once you take them off, try to put them on, you can over-tighten them, over them and kind of squish this down too much and they'll start leaking. Um, and the other good thing is, is they usually give you a, uh, a little sleeve, which I thought I had one, but apparently I don't. Um, they'll give you a little brass sleeve that can go inside a piece of plastic pipe, uh, so you can use it on uh, plastic tubing. Oh, here it is right here. Uh, this little sleeve here will go inside the plastic tubing to give that ferrule something to kind of crimp on. Uh, the, other, the other type of fitting is a flared fitting. Flared fittings are usually used on anything um, that holds... Uh, pressurized gas or anything that will uh, be taken off and on a lot and it consists obviously of a nice flare and a nut and it doesn't need any other sealer it's the flare against this face that seals everything and there are two options here you can either use one of these which they call a swivel I'm not exactly sure why but basically it's just a solder on flare nut and uh, it's already pre-flared it's got a little stub just put the tubing in there solder it on you're good to go or you can uh, flare your own which is what we're going to do so when you flare your own, you got to make sure that the inside here is deburred and you use uh, a regular reamer off the back of one of your uh, tubing cutters. This is, I usually use Imperial, it's a brand that I use. Uh, and you just want to take the burr off. You, now you don't want to jam it in there and go crazy with it, otherwise you'll tend to um, make it too thin on the end and you'll end up with a crack. Another option too is you could take a sharp utility knife and just lightly drag it on the inside and that'll take that burr off. So you need a flaring block, and this is uh, an imperial one. And so we're going to choose the quarter inch here. You can see, I don't know if you can tell, but um, this side is straight, flat, and this side is beveled. And the beveled side is the side that you want. So we're going to stick our tubing in here. And we're going to come up, uh, stick proud, maybe about the length of a nickel or so. It's not going to take that much. And we're going to tighten it down with these little wing nut things here. Now I have two flaring tools here. Uh, this one here, they're both Imperials, and this one here. And the cool thing about this one is that uh, this can actually, actually it's 
stuck on there, but you can actually take this off and add these guys to it and you kind of have yourself an automatic swedging tool. But we're going to use this one here and if you look at the handle, you can see it's kind of got like a little round notch in that side and that's not was not only pinched by a machine to be able to, you know, just capture the rod, uh, the handle, but also to use as a lever to grab the edges of these butterfly nuts and you can tighten them down. Now, no matter what, this is going to make some lines on your, your tubing. There's nothing you can do about that. So then you want to put some oil on here, which I already did, and it snaps on there like that. And you just tighten it down, fit it right into the, the tubing, okay? And then it'll self-center itself. And then you just want to go slow, give it a turn. And I like loosening it up and turning a little bit. That gives it the copper time to relax. Sometimes, especially on the bigger tubes, if you just keep going uh, really tight, what will happen is you'll uh, end up cracking the flare that you just put on there. So we're going to go by eye. That looks pretty good there. And we'll measure it up to an existing flare. And you can see that tapered section. And you, can, you want it just to the edge of it. That's what I like doing, so that looks good. We're going to leave that there. And we're going to take it out. And there is our flare. And you can see the little marks that the grippies made on there. And we sit in the flare nut. Flare nut. Nice. Okay, so then we're going to take our Compression nut. Okay, snipped a little bit off of that. That should be able to give me enough to be able to get in there. Yep. All right, so I'm going to tighten our flare first. We get it on. We're good. So here's our setup. Here's our shutoff valve to uh, lock our travel. And this here is our needle valve. So now we need to um, make our handle for the top here and uh, probably make out of some aluminum. So we'll cut off, uh, we'll get a piece in the lathe that we can cut off and uh, drill and attach to this guy here. <clears throat> okay, so first things first, I'm just gonna take a skim cut on the outside here, just chew it up. So now we're going to make a handle, and the handle is, I don't know, going to be about maybe an eighth of an inch or so uh, wide, but what we want to, what I want to do is I'm going to turn maybe about a half an inch of this, pretty much arbitrary, uh, about a half an inch or so of this down to half inch. The reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm going to hold it in a collet, and I have that little index plate I made out of the, um, the bridge port handle, and we're going to actually be able to use that to carve some numbers and divide this. Uh, to make some numbers on it. Now, with the, whether or not the numbers actually correspond to anything, I don't know, but it'll make it look good. 
So I'm just going to turn a little section of this down to a half an inch here. Okay, so now I'll just make sure that this is square as should be. Yep. And uh, let's say somewhere around that thick. I should, I should do it. A little bit more. And somewhere around there. Maybe a little bit less, right there. Okay. I'm just gonna slow this down by one notch here. Pop that sucker right off. Okay, so here's the reason why I'm using the 3C collar system instead of the ER collar chuck, um, and why I had to turn it down a half an inch. The reason why is I made this little collar, and this is out of a Bridgeport um, dial, so that's kind of going to let me index a spindle. So right now all we're going to do is we're going to face this, and we're going to chamfer this edge, and then we'll knurl this. Um, so let me do that right now. I'm go ahead and just face this here. set up my uh, knurling tool real quick. We'll give that a quick knurl. Okay, so we're just going to give that a quick knurl. Now there are all kinds of math equations you can do to make sure it doesn't double um, double uh, knurl itself, but we're just going to go for it because uh, that means that we would have to, you know, turn down to a certain diameter and all this other stuff. So we're just going to see how this looks. not too bad and since this is so short I'm just gonna gently hand feed this in the collet a little bit that's all right but we got the neural on there and I'll get it up close to that but it doesn't look too bad all right so now we need to get the needle valve okay so we want to attach it to this and we are uh, 1.89 so uh, I can do an eighth inch hole. Uh, 1.89. 1.89. 
1 1.90. 1.90 is a number 12 and 1.875 is uh, 3 16 So we're better off doing 3 16 and just pressing this guy on there. Okay, so that's more than deep enough. And now, what we want to do is I'm going to set up a tool so we can inscribe some lines and a pointer for this little collar here. We'll see what we can do. Okay, so here's what we got. Here's our collar, and this is a spring-loaded tap center that I that though, this is the one that I made a while ago, and I turned it down a hold in my Noga, so that gives me a little spring plunger to grab the grooves of this. Uh, dial and I have a uh, 60 degree threading tool turned sideways in the holder and what we're gonna do is we're gonna index here to zero I'm gonna click in okay and uh, actually I get a septic tool on center height that would that would help would it center height there. I'm going to set it at zero and we're going to make eight marks so we're going to index every 25 and I'm just going to touch. I'm going to lock down the carriage and what we're going to do is we're going to feed in with the compound here just a little bit and we're just going to make a line. Alright, I can definitely go deeper than that. deeper than that. Alright, that's good there. So then we're going to index 25. Actually, you know what I need to do? Let's come back to zero. I need to go to the center before I come back. So we're going to come up to 25, just there. And we're going to make another line. So now we can stamp some numbers in there if we want to. Okay, so here's what we got. I punched some numbers in there. Uh, I'm missing a number four. I don't know where the stamp is, but I could just put it on there um, after the fact. And I kind of double strike the six by accident, but you know, what are you gonna do? And um, I kind of keyed it so that when I tighten it full, Number one is pointed in line with this. So you can see, there's our adjustment knob now. And uh, there is, you can zoom in here. There is our knurl. And there's the top, like I said, there's a double strike there by accident and there's our numbers and this pins just pressed in and there's our grooves all in all not too bad 
Okay, so we got everything bled out. So here's our one quarter turn valve. We turn that. We're going to lift up. And then we're going to let go. Alright, and you can see the blade there. I'll tilt you up a little bit. You can see we're holding. Now I can adjust the flow here. And it's a lot less touchy than last time. A lot more fine control already. Get open up the valve there, dummy. So a lot more fine control over it. Rather than using that knob, I can actually feel what I'm moving. So, what we can do, set it at one rate, okay? Make a cut, close our valve, lift up. Although our fluid go to one side, you'll be able to feel it. And then you can let go. Set your stock in there, and then just turn your valve open, and you don't have to touch the needle valve. So that was a very good suggestion from you guys that we just implemented in there. And we'll get an overhead view of this here. Okay, so you can see what we got here. So basically, uh, that's where I had it for that speed. You can lift up, actually close that valve, lift up, and it'll hold. And then when we're ready to cut, just boom we don't have to mess with the needle valve every time and this actually about that's pretty much my swing from one to two of uh speed wise but it's way more sensitive um even though the width of this is is the same um you just have much more of a feel with a round knob than i did with the handle and i also didn't have to um loosen up this packing nut as much as uh, on the um, little bar that I had on there. So all in all, we uh, improved a really good project. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, I'll I'll add these to the other video or link to them, um, just so people that are working on this can uh, kind of see this. And uh, maybe you guys that have already made it, maybe you already did something similar, or not. But either way, thanks for watching this video, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.